logging in. Okay, so um, let's just start over here, Kat. I'd like you just to tell me, and it's not that big a deal. I, I don't think we're gonna get all the audio, but just just tell me, tell your classmates kind of your your motivation for taking this course and what you hope to come away with. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm Kat. Um, I'm majoring in environmental studies and I'm hoping to um, actually complete the program. So, mm. um, so this is the next step. Uh, in that goal, so um, I hope to be able to kind of combine um, those two different elements that I'm learning about the environment, energy, and how I can, um, you know, use renewables as a way to um, prevent pollution and use for the fossil fuels. And okay, cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. It's, it's, it's similar to kind of the goals where the climate change studies minor and energy tech mm -hmm. came together. You've got the sort of the nature side and the tech side, so, okay, all right. Tyler? Uh, well, I'm taking this course because I'm applying to be your grad student. Okay. <laughs> and uh, on top of that, uh, my father's interested in switching to renewables out of the ranch, so yeah. this course will primarily equip me to know how to do right. that. Right, right, good, good, good. Okay. Daniel? Um, taking this to complete the Associates of Applied Science, and then I tend to move on to some sort of uh, science that will lead to a career in, in the Department of the Interior. And oh, yeah. So okay. It's kind of so are, and you're th are you you're thinking about doing your BAS as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. Well, that's good, good stuff. So. Is it Mar Mariah? Mariah, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, Mariah. So um, I'm in the Climate Change Studies in my program. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Graduating this spring. Cool. Um, but in general, I'm just sort of interested in understanding more of the technical details of different types of sustainable energy mm -hmm. um, and renewables, just because I think uh, kind of understanding that is important to arguing for or against mm -hmm. the types of technology. Okay. Um, and, you know, as environmentalists, sort of, we have a tendency to say no to a lot of things. Right not say yes to things, <laughs> and I think um, being knowledgeable about this type of technology is a good way to sort of like, to support it in a, on a different level that's just kind of on, on principle. Nice. Cool. Good. Perfect. My name is Rob Weimer, and at the moment my major is carpentry because there's no major for uh, sustainable practices or anything. We'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. Yeah. Um, but I am here currently to educate myself so that I can potentially promote sustainable practices on the broad scale mm -hmm. of um, like corporate entities and even here at home um, because I think if we're a little less subservient to outside influences, the inflation won't hit us as hard and we won't be at each other's throats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, those are all um, great reasons to take this course. So this, this is a course that it's, it's basically your um, second semester. You know, you, you, could, you could have taken 101 right out of the blocks and then fine. Mariah, it sounds like you're near the end of your undergraduate degree. You've had, you've had some algebra. You've had some math. Um, a lot of times that you know, can be a, a challenge if you come into the course without really any, um, any mathematics. But uh, I think, you know, last, last semester everybody got through it, no problem. So 102 is taught in a, in a similar format. We'll do two lectures, and I think I've got the hours right there. Yep, Tuesday, Thursday, 11 to 1220. Here we are in the Gallagher Business Building, room 225. It is three credits. It is cross-listed between the Energy Tech Program and the Climate Change Studies Program, so you're in the right place. There's my email, there's my phone. My teaching assistant is Tim Chester. He graduated with the uh, with a 4.0 from the program a couple of years ago, and was awarded the uh, Mortar Board Award. So every program gets to select its top grad, and he just happened to be ours. Ch Tim is a um, veteran. Worked worked for the um, Coast Guard and saw a lot of these conflicts that we were just talking about firsthand. And, you know, he comes back and he's like, I, I want to be in charge of my destiny, in charge of the future. Um, 
Right? He's like, well, I used to be the man, now I want to stick it to the man. <laughs> you know, so, and in, in the same way, so he's, he's put these things into practice. He's, he's done some solar thermal on his house. He's built uh, wind with us, wind turbines with us. He's built um, rocket stoves. Um, we're designing a geothermal system for the greenhouse up at the Blackfeet Community College. We haven't done any tidal work together. Yeah, we haven't done any wave work together. Although Tim has been, you know, out like I said on the on the Coast Guard, and a lot of times if you're way out trying to power some buoy, you know, you're not setting something on fire. You've got a solar panel or some kind of, uh, you know, mechanical harvesting system. So Tim is a fantastic resource. Tim's office hours, he's typically in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, takes a lunch break. Um, it's kind of middle, middle of the day, middle of the week, or his hours in general. Um, I'm in my office from 1 to 3, Tuesday, Thursdays. If, you, if that doesn't work for you, give me a call and we can work something else out. Okay. I just like 101. We will have a final, but it's just a bonus. You don't have to take it. It can only help. It can't hurt. Um, now, just like 101 covered basically all of the fossil fuels and non-renewables, including nuclear, 102 takes a, a 180 and covers really all of the renewables. And then the last chapter covers integration. And if you, if you get a chance, um, fantastic book out there by Amory Lovins, uh, A-M-O-R-Y, Amory Lovins, L-O-V-I-N-S. Amory Lovins published a book in 20, I don't know, 11 or 12 called Reinventing Fire. And I was just reading it this morning, in fact, paging through it. And he, a little quote from Amory Lovins says that the um, integrators of energy are the chefs in the kitchen. And sure, you need someone to go buy the groceries, but whoever figures out the integration game is, is going to win in the long run. So <coughs> I guess my point there is there's no magic bullet. Everyone's saying, well, what's the best renewable? Wind, no, it's solar, no, it's biomass, no. And as it turns out, it's, it's really using the, the local resources and, and optimizing it. And, and that's, that's what we'll see in the very last chapter. So we'll go through each one of these, you know, detail by detail. But by the time we get to the end of the uh, chapter, we'll really do integration. And then um, if your course schedule is not full yet and you want to take this more into like the techno-economic realm, we also teach ETEC 214, which is energy storage and distribution. So it takes all these concepts and say, I've got solar over here and I've got wind over there and, and the power company wants to charge me a nickel a kilowatt hour at noon and a dime and at midnight. So it, it starts doing some more modeling. In 102, we're just kind of back to the word problems, you know, how many kilowatt hours per minute, so you, so you can kind of wrap your head around the tech, but 214, which in a lot of ways is sort of the capstone class, and I think, I think we're probably going to do, um, we're now partnered more strongly with physics and pre-engineering, we might actually offer that a version of 214 as a 400 level course, <coughs> or at least 300 level, so. Okay, so that's kind of where the course sits in the ecosystem of academia. I like to use the word inexhaustible. A lot of times people say <clears throat> alternative, but in my mind, like alternative to what? Alternative to <laughs> running out of fuel. So I like to use the word inexhaustible. That's my word that I use instead of alternative. Renewable. Okay. Course objectives. Quantify, so we'll do, we'll do math. We've already, to a large extent, solved this problem, human metabolic and technological energy consumption. That there's, that's your 10 megajoules and your 200 megajoule per day diet. We, again, will sort of look at the rate at which humanity consumes energy. One number just to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Last semester, we focused on that 10 million to one ratio. 10 million to 1 ratio is the 3 billion years to 300 years, which we're drawing from the carbon bank. In 102, the number to keep in mind is 10,000 to 1. 
10,000 to 1, well, there's two, no, and there's another ratio too, but 10,000 to 1 is the ratio at which solar energy hits the planet to the rate at which we consume it. So solar energy is actually hitting the planet 10 times, 10,000 times faster than we consume it. So that's just kind of a good number. And then another kind of easy way to remember it is that enough solar energy hits the planet in one hour to power humanity for a year. That's, about, that's also about a 10,000 to 1 ratio. It's like 8640 or something. Okay, so that's a 10,000 10, to 1 ratio. So that's, that's to get your head wrapped around this little bullet point. The other number to keep in mind, and we'll see this in Chapter 4, which is bioenergy. The other number to keep in mind is 4 to 1. So 10,000 to 1 is solar energy to human consumption rate. 4 to 1 is... Carbon, it's, it's the carbon bonding to carbon breaking ratio. So photosynthesis is building carbon bonds four times faster than we break them. It's another, another thing to keep in mind. So, so Mother Earth you know, photosynthesizes, what's, af what's after, um, let's see, um, Giga, Terra. <laughs> Um, PETA, EXA, <coughs> Z, uh, Zeta, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Mother Nature sequesters two Zeta joules of bioenergy every year, and we burn 500 exajoules. So, Mother Nature puts two bucks in the bank, and we take 50 cents out. Okay, so that's another, another way to think about it. Okay. Physical and technical aspects, we'll spend a lot of time on that, all of the major renewables. Look at the technologies, how they work, how you capture it, how you convert it, how you store it, how you distribute it. We'll do some economics. Did a little bit last time, we'll do more economics. And we do a bunch of economics in 214, again, if you're interested in that. Uh, efficacy, Eff efficacy is like efficiency, but efficacy means Again, conversion, you know, turn, turning uh, electrons into photons. And we don't, we don't really touch that much on conservation. If you want to do that, take Building Energy 235 or Carpentry 283 through, uh, through Freer. Okay. I really haven't taken any Carpentry. Yeah, but Fre John Freer does a good job with conservation. They just threw me in there. Well, you'll be fine. You'll, you'll, you'll swim. You won't sink. You'll be good. I won't drown if I can build a boat. No, like, no, that's right. Just build that <laughs> boat, <laughs> chop that canoe. Uh, and then, as Mariah was saying, we will we will look at you know not only the technical barriers but some of the social barriers. You know, where you sorry you can't say no to everything. Uh, and then solutions, cost and benefits, where the sources are. We'll do the we'll do the calculations few economic analyses like we did in 101. Um, yeah, full suite. Okay, so there's the textbook. It's the third edition. These guys and gals have been at it for a while. They're, it, I really like the, the, the text. It seems like it's British and they seem to be a few decades in front of us. Great Britain just put their last lump of coal in a museum, for example. And they're, you know, explored gas. <coughs> lots of wind, lots of tidal in the UK as well. So grading, so there'll be three problem sets, so it's a lot like 101, uh, six exams, five summaries. The summaries will be a lot like, um, again, a lot like 101, but focus more on the renewables. There'll be a couple, actually there's one really good paper on um, climate change maybe a couple, you know, kind of look at a global view, and we dig into, and if you took 101, you, you read that last paper on information and entropy, there's a, there's a global warming paper where they actually use a coefficient called lambda that they don't name as entropy, but that's what the dimensions are. Okay. Is that a heat lambda, like a lambda sensor? No, nah, I'm not sure where they got it from. I, I'm not sure they really justify it. They're just looking for a unique... Greek letter, but it's the 
it's 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 the ratio between um, the amount of power, solar power hitting the planet to the amount that leaves. Because as you know, the Earth is radiating into space all the time since the Earth is warmer than space, and, um, and there's a there's a temperature. And then they also throw in that whole 0 0.5 degree, one degree, two degree scenario. And when you divide power by temperature, you get entropy. You get, you get the entro entropic velocity, if you will. Yeah. Well, um, there's a couple different ways to do it. But yeah, it, it, it's, you know, the, <coughs> the way to look at it is, is the, um, either the change in temperature or the difference in temperatures between like the inside and the outside is, is how you typically look at it. Yeah. Okay, so, that, that's, so there's a neat, neat paper we'll look at in those summaries. We're also going to redo summary three with an extra bonus that will add a um, correlation coefficient. So if you're like struggle a little bit with summary three and like, hey, I want another shot at it, here's your chance. It'll, it, it'll, it'll breeze through it easier and then I'll just ask you when you do your correlations. You guys had some really neat parabolic extrapolations last semester. It was, it was fun. It was some of the best. I think yours was, was good. I mean, you actually showed the peak. Like, okay, maybe we peaked. Mm -hmm. you actually helped me with that. Maybe we peaked. Well, that's all right. But, but it, was, it was so, so we'll, do, we'll redo summary three, you know, use the three different models for looking at correlation between some, you know, larger statistics. It's actually pretty fun once you get the hang of it. Well, it is. It's like anything. It, it, it's, it's a drag when you're no good at it, but once, once you kind of turn that corner, it, it is. It, it's rewarding, yeah. Um, we're not going to do essays. Sorry, that's, that's still in there. Um, it's just it's the summaries and the, whole, and the problem sets. Uh, due dates are at the bottom of the syllabus. You're pretty much off the hook. I just want you to log into the website this week. There are the exams. Uh, if you need more time, let me know. I'm pretty, pretty easy on that. Okay. I need, on the summaries, I need 300 words plus. I need you to, and so the difference between 102 and 101, in, in the summaries for 102, you have to cite the paper you're reading and you have to look for one more resource. It can, and the, sometimes the easiest place to find that is just in the reference section of the paper you're reading or you can go out and do your own research through the Mansfield Library. But I need you to, in this course, just do a little bit of your own research. Oh, and use at least one equation in the, in the in, you know, use the equation, cite it, say what the variables are, so that, so we're moving towards the quantif, you know, quantification of these things. Um, skip the essays thing. If you want to go crazy and write more, Essays, you're, you're welcome to. I got plenty of stuff for you. Um, so if you're if you're here, come to class. You'll have perfect score and attendance. If you're if you're not, just log into the weekly forums so I know you're out there. Uh, yeah, drop ad, same as any other course. Academic honesty, same as any other course. If you need an accommodation, just let me know. I. Will um, shoot shoot me an email if there's something. You know, I'm pretty good about checking into the forums, but don't think just because I post just you post it on the forum, I'm going to go and respond to it right away. So if you need something right away, send me an email. Uh, okay, so like um, um, like last semester, we we break this break this out into learning units. Today we'll get a little bit into Boyle Chapter One. Quick, quick breeze through force, energy, power, first law of thermodynamics. Forms of energy, we'll review that briefly. We'll look at efficiency, uh, touch briefly on fossil fuels, then look at, you know, broad gamut of renewables, and then uh, renewable and sustainability. So then we'll do solar thermal, kind of the oldest, you know, wake up, sun shining, walk out of the cave, yawn, scratch, whatever. But um, solar thermal is, you know, in a lot of ways, kind of the, the low-hanging fruit. As, as I mentioned, the, the sun provides 10,000 times the 
energy, you know, your USDA of energy. So why not put it to better use as, as direct solar thermal? Then we'll do solar PV. Nice thing about solar PV, it has recently reached what you might call grid parity in the, in the so-called levelized cost of solar panels. It's now as cheap as plugging in and, and, and buying the non-renewables. When, gosh, well, when I started, even started teaching, um, you know, heavily in this field six years ago, I think solar panels were three bucks a watt. 41 cents now. It, so, <laughs> I, mean, ga I mean, gasoline has gone down by a factor of two, but solar has gone down by a factor of six. It's not going to go up again. So, it, it was at two or three bucks, now it's at 41 cents. <clears throat> so, that's solar PV. The Modules become more efficient all the time. Good, good efficiency might be 20%. I was just in Japan, saw some quantum, quantum dot PV, 48%. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah, the space is an issue. Um, Tesla developed shingles for the roof. Yep. 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 Yeah. I talked to a few guys about the Tesla shingle installers here. That you know, like yeah, if you're in San Diego and you've got uh, the 10, 20 degree shift, but I'll let my neighbor try it first in Montana. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, bioenergy, we'll, we'll spend, bioenergy is one of the longest chapters in the book, and it's, it's, a, it's a hot topic in Montana. We do have a lot of waste biomass. When I first arrived here, there was a plan in place to put in a biomass boiler to offset the natural gas consumption here at the U. It died uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, that was just when fracking was becoming a big deal and gas became much cheaper, so it was very difficult to compete on a you know, dollar per dollar basis. The, um, they were also looking for an exclusive contract with a logger and they just couldn't find one. No, it, it, was, it was because all of a sudden, you know, the price is going down, like, ah, I can't get you wood for 20 bucks a ton. Like, yeah, sorry, I just can't do it. And you know, the third issue was the air shed. Um, you know, frequently Missoula has, what, what's the word for it? Climate day, or um, air quality days, or there's, there's, well, there's, it, it comes up on the news. It's a, what's it called, though? Yeah, but it, but it's even an air alert. I don't know if you guys watched that, but we've had, we've had a few air alerts recently, mm -hmm. and I was just coming back from Seattle into town, like, yeah, that's it's kind of a smoggy bowl there. Um, so that was another issue too. It was like, what what what's coming out? What particulates are hanging hanging around in the valley? Um, we'll do hydro electricity. As you probably know, Northwestern Energy has bought the dams. Uh, there are are, I think still are, we'll see what happens with the current administration, but there are uh, federal regulations stating that public utilities have to have a certain fraction or percentage of their base load coming from renewables. We've got a lot of hydro in Montana, and so Northwestern Energy, to hedge its bets, said rather than buying renewables versus non-renewables in the open market, we'll just buy the dams. So we know where it's coming from, um, you know, which makes economic sense, you know, so that was their energy security. Tidal power, we're not going to see that in Montana, but I, I do know a few folks who do tidal power off the uh, Pacific Northwest coast. The math in there is kind of fun, it's kind of cool just to see these things. Um, wind energy, we will when we get to, uh, get to that chapter, I'll take you over to our wind trailer. We've got a few little wind turbines. Um, we've had a couple students, uh, Daniel and Serenity, just built their own little magnetically levitating wind turbine. So we have we have one in the lab now. Just you know, a few few watts, nothing nothing big, but a good good prototype. Wave energy. The the math on that is also kind of kind of fun to look at. And you, could, you know you could imagine doing some some wave energy on Flathead Lake. You know they get they get three four foot rollers, and uh, so we'll pencil that out in terms of what it is in terms of 
the neat thing about wave energy, remember, remember the first paper for 101 when we do joules per cubic meter? Wave energy is watts per meter. So if you're like, if you say, I need, I need a kilowatt of power, I need a megawatt of power. Well, the, the way that power for <coughs> wave energy is, is rated, well, how many meters of coastline do you have? Because, you know, that much power hitting that one uh, meter. And you multiply. We'll do, we'll do geothermal. Uh, there are some n really neat folks in geothermal right now. There's a woman by the name of Susan Petty who just won the same award that Dr. Fear, Nikki Fear, won recently with the EP3 folks. So she's in California. And she's in some large geothermal plants. Then they've even done their own techno-economic analysis for coal strip, and to to replace one of the one of the four generators going going from coal to geothermal, uh, two billion dollar price tag. And if you just run that math really quick, I don't have my pad with me, but um, two billion divided by let's just say they replace coal strip three or four, which are running at 500 megawatts. So $2 billion divided by 500 megawatts, that's four bucks a watt, which uh, is down there. At 41 cents a watt, that's just for the solar. So if you're actually going to go put solar on your house, installation, other parts, et cetera, you're probably talking two or three. But that's, that's the, that was the price tag to go geothermal at coal strip that Susan Petty is uh, sharing with me. And I can show you her notes, too, when we get there. One out of four, yeah. Coal, coal strip runs at 2.2 gigawatts. <coughs> yeah. There's two, the, the two older ones are just north of 300 meg, and the two newer ones are just north of 600 meg. Okay, and then as I mentioned, integration is week 14. And that's it. That's it for the whole uh, book. Okay, now the due dates, everyone's favorite topic. This... Um, this first week, just, just log on and say, say who you are. For week two, there'll be a little bio sketch. Just lay out in a little more detail what you just told me in class. You know, who, who I am, where I came from, where am I now, where am I going. Summary one will be due in week three. I think on Thursday, I'll just uh, point that out to you. Week four, we'll have the, the first exam. So it's, it's, you know, it's about a chapter a week maybe a little less. There are, there are not as many chapters in the book as there were for 101. So it's maybe in some ways a little bit more relaxed. We'll do, we'll do a problem set and then uh, just crank on through. Chapter 4 is kind of long. That's why there's just one exam devoted to it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, then on out. So basically one, one thing due per week. Yeah. Is there a schedule that shows like which day of the week the due date is? No. There's, there's not. So here's what I, here's what I do. Since it's online and not, since we're not sitting in the class with pencil paper, so week one is today and Thursday, and so when week two starts, your introduction should be done, okay. and then when week three starts, your bio sketch should be done. Uh, when week four starts, if your summary one isn't done yet, it starts to be a problem. So um, I, I typically launch. So like on week four, I will launch um, exam one on Thursday, and I want you to have it done by Tuesday. And it's all in Moodle. Okay. Yeah, it's all in Moodle. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. And then what I'll do is, um, you know, like on the probably on the Monday of week four. Probably on the. Um, well, probably won't even be till the Monday of week five. I'll grade summary one because you, you've turned that in, so you'll get you'll get I mean your first your first grade, and you'll get a little bit of feedback on these two guys. But your first grade will start to come in around week five. I'll have I'll have summary one graded by week five. So in class we're just having lectures and then everything else is due. Well. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then but so let's say after week four you've got some questions on the exam like what what was this I got this wrong please. We'll spend spend lecture time going okay. over you know tricky exam problems, and then summary one. Uh, you know, in the summaries, I usually pick somebody to pick on and say, hey, you know, 
change your language or, you know, look at, you know, or like, gosh, this was a fantastic argument, way to go on this. So we'll do some of that in class too. Yeah. And then same with, same with the problem sets. Um, I remember, you know, last semester, for example, we worked a few of the stickier problems in class and, you know, you know get some more immediate feedback than you can get online. So that's it for the syllabus. Let me take a little break. I think we're in pretty good shape for time. Perfect. 30 minutes. <laughs>